Design and Communication Graphics, Higher Level, 2019, Section C, Question C-1, Geologic Geometry. Part A, the accompanying map located on the back page of Section A shows ground contours at 5 metre vertical intervals. ABC is the centre line of a proposed track for motocross bikes. DEFG is a proposed pit stop area. O is the centre of the circular curve. The track has the following specifications. The portion from A to B is level at an altitude of 55 metres. The portion from B to C is rising uniformly to a level of 60 metres at the finish line C. The formation level at F in the pit stop area is 55 metres and the gradient from F to E is the same as that as of the track from B to C. Using side slopes of 1 in 1 for cuttings and 1 in 2 for the embankments, complete the earthworks necessary to accommodate the track and pit stop area between A and C on each side. Part B. On the map, P, Q and R are three points on the top surface of a stratum of ore. Q and R are at altitudes of 40 metres and 25 metres respectively. The stratum has a strike of north 54 degrees west as indicated by the given strike line S. Part 1. Using the given XY, X1, Y1 line already drawn on the map, determine the dip of the stratum. Part 2. Find the altitude of point P in the space provided at the top of the map. Draw the elevation of the triangular portion of the top surface of the stratum. Point R is already located for you in elevation. Finally, part 3. Determine the true angle between the line PR and the strike line S. So in the question we are told that the road from A to B is level at 55 metres. And we are told that the side slope for the embankments is 1 is to 2 and the side slope for a cutting is 1 is to 1. So if we're dealing with a road that is level at 55 metres, there's the 55 metre contour and it cuts across there. And then if we look at the land and what it's doing after that, you have 50, 45, 40, 35 and 35. So the ground is going to have to be built up to bring us to a level road. So in other words, in this area, we are going to have an embankment to build up from the ground to the road level. And the side slopes for an embankment is one is to two. Now to explain this concept of side slope, the side slope for an embankment is one is to two. So if we imagine that our road is up here, in order to drop a meter in height, we have to go out two meters horizontally from the road to bring us to where the embankment is going to be. Now this ratio must be maintained, but it is no good to us on this map. Why? Because the distance between the contours is five meters. So we have to convert this ratio into a multiple of five. So if we imagine here's our road here at 55, in order to drop down five meters, we have to measure out 10 away from the edge of the road. And that brings us to our new level, which would be 50. And if you keep doing this, um, you're dropping five meters each time. So if we go back to our drawing, from the center here where the circle is sprung, I've drawn a line out here and as it comes across from the road remembering that the road is at a height of 55 meters I've measured out 10 another 10 another 10 and another 10 
each time I measure 10 millimeters away from the road, I have dropped five meters in height. Again, keeping the ratio of one is to two correct. So if we measure out 10, we've dropped five meters, measure out another 10, we've dropped another five meters and so on and so forth. So you do that on this side of the road and remember the road is 55, so the next one's going to be 50, 45, 40 and 35. And we do the same thing on this side of the road here. Now, if we look at what we have here, we have this arc here, which all these green arcs then are rotated about the point O because all of these green arcs must be parallel to the side of the road. So they are rotated about the point O. So the 35 height that we have marked here cuts the 35 contour at that point there. So there's our first point. Here is the 40 height line and here is the 40 contour and that gives us a point there. Now you have to imagine that this 45 line is continuing on out here and this line will come in to meet it. And that will give you where that line will be moving towards. Moving on to the other side, we have the 35 contour here coming around. So that means we have a point there again on the 35 height line. And then we have 40, 45, 50, and then finally 55 brings us into the road. So that gives us these series of points which we will connect together and that will give us the earthworks on that side of the road. The same is true on this side. We have 35 here. There's the 35 contour. It gives us a point there. 40, 45, 50, and then finally 55. So once all those points are established and found, we connect them together and that gives us the first part of the earthworks, which is the embankment on that portion of the roadway there. Now, as the trackway roadway moves that little bit further on, the ground is now rising up to a height of 60, but the road remains level at 55. So this means we are transitioning into cut where we're going to have to cut this piece of land away to make way for the track as it comes into the pit area here. Now we were told that the side slopes for a cutting were one is to one. So that means in order to maintain the ratio for every five meters we move away from the road, we have increased five meters in height. So if we from the center point here, oh, I've drawn this line and then from the edge of the road, I have measured down five millimeters and five millimeters. And when I measure away from the road five millimeters, that brings me to this height here of 60. Remembering the road is at 55. So we have 60 come out another five brings us to 65. And likewise, we do the same here on this side of the road. Measure out five millimeters brings you to 60 measure out another five brings you to 65. Now again, these arcs are rotated about the point O and where the 60 line marking the level of 60 cuts the 60 contour, gives you your point there and a point there. And where the 65 level line intersects the contour gives us these two points here. The same is true on the other side of the road. So our line for cut starts here at the 55 point, goes through those points and comes into here. And likewise, the same is true on the other side. So that completes the earthworks for the level portion of the road, moving from A to, to B. Um, 55 is the height of the road. So as on, there's the 55 contour. Everything on this side, the ground is lower, so it's going to be an embankment and the side slope for an embankment is one is to two. This is why these lines are twice as wide as these lines up here. This is a cutting. The side slope for a cutting is one is to one as specified in the question. And that's why these lines are half the size of those ones for a change in level of five meters. So that completes that section of the roadway. 
Now for the next part of the question, we are told that the road from B to C, and this also includes the pit area here, is rising uniformly and we are told to a height of 60 meters. So everything on this line that cuts across here from C, everything on this line is 60 meters. So we know that B is at 55 because this is the level road here. So B is at a height of 55 meters and C is at a height of 60 meters. So the road is rising up five meters from B to C. Now we look at what the land is doing. And if we look at the land here, we can see that all of the contours, 55, 50, 45, 35, 35, 40, 45, 50, all of the contours are lower than the road. So therefore we're going to have fill here. And likewise, the same is true on this side of the road, on, um, on this side of the pit area. So what does that mean? Well, we think of this, cut the silage low, fill the trailer high. So we have to decide where we're going to put a fill cone and the um, cut low, if we were dealing with cut here, we would place the cut cone on the low side of the road, but we're not. We are going to be dealing with an embankment or fill. So we have to put the fill cone at the high end of the road. So up here from E, I have drawn a circle, radius 10 millimeters there at E. And I have also drawn a circle, a semicircle here, radius 10, with the point of the cone being at that point there, as this line goes off the road. Now, we have to remember our ratios of side slopes to embankments, that that point there on the road is 60 meters high. But because I have drawn a semicircle radius 10, that semicircle now has a height of 55 because we have come out 10 away from the road, we have dropped five meters. In the same way that over here, we, we came out 10 millimeters away from the road, we dropped five meters. The same is true over here. Measure out 10 and you have dropped five meters. Now, that point there on the road is 60. We're told that in the question. But the semicircle there, or the cone, the base of the cone that's going around that, the base of that cone now has a height of 55. Now we also know that this line coming from B also has a height of 55 meters. So if I draw a line from here, tangential to the base of the cone, that line is now level at 55 meters. It has to be, because why? It is connected to the base of a cone that we know to be 55 because we've measured out 10 away from the side of the road. And we also know that the road here at this point is 55 meters. So a line going from a point that's 55 meters to the base circle of the cone that is also 55 meters means that this line is level at 55 meters. Now, once you've established that, the question then is very, very simple. We measure out 10, 10, 10, and 10. And every time we measure out 10 millimeters away from um, this original line, and all of these lines are parallel to that, we are dropping five meters each time. So as you can see over here, we have 55, 50, 45, 40, and then this last one here is 35. So this line here, 35, there's two contours at 35, gives you a point there and a point there. This is the 40 meter line. It cuts the 40 contour there and gives us another two points. There's the 45 meter contour and we get a point there and a point there. And then finally 55 and 55, and then we're back to the road. Connect all of those points together and then that gives us the earthworks on this side of the road. Moving on to the top, it's the very same situation. It's just on the opposite side of this pit area. Here's our semicircle, radius 10. So the top of the cone is 60, but the base circle is a 55. 
This edge here is on the same level as B, so everything on that line there is at a height of 55 meters. So F is 55 meters high. So connecting a line from F to the base circle of the cone here gives us this line level at 55. So then all of these other lines are parallel to that 50, 45, 40, and then there's another one over here, 35. And where they cut the respective contours give you all the points. And we draw the earthworks here on the northern side of the road. Now, finally, then we have this little portion here, which is level. So these lines are going to be parallel to it. So very simply, you just measure out 10, 10, 10, and 10, and you're dropping five meters each time. And we have the 50 contour here is cut at that point there. Then the 45, the 40, and then we have 35 there and 35 there. And the two elements of earthworks will cross at that point and we draw the intersection line back into F. So that then completes the earthworks um, for the question. The first portion here in the level area of the road is straightforward enough in the fact that all of these arcs are, uh, par are parallel to the edge of the road cut, sorry, we have your embankment here in fill and we have our cutting here. And then over on this side here, the sloping part of the road, this is where a little bit more imagination is required. But again, it's all about remembering, cut the silage low, fill the trailer high. If you're dealing with a situation where you're going to have to put in a cutting, you will put the cut cone at the low end of the road. But because we have to put in an embankment or fill, the fill goes at the high end of the road. So you draw your semicircle there, radius 10, and you have to imagine then because it's a cone, this is the apex of the cone at 60, but the base is at 55. And then you establish your level line there at 55. And once you have that established and you have that line planing into the road on both sides, um, the rest of it is very simple. Just draw in the um, other lines and find out where it cuts the contours to get the earthworks. Again, just be careful to make sure that you have um, the correct lines cut in the correct contours and not to make any mistakes doing that. And that then completes the earthworks for that question. Now with all the lines on the drawing, it is getting a little bit complicated, but um, the next bit is pretty much straightforward. So we're told that Q, Q, R and P are points on the top surface of a stratum of R. R has a height of 25 metres and Q has a height of 40 metres. And what we're asked to do is to um, determine, first of all, the dip and then the height of P. Now, in order to get the dip, the strike is already indicated there in from uh, Q that the strike is 54 degrees to the west of north. So in order to get the dip angle, if we extend on this line here and that you're told in the question to set up this new view on the X, Y line. So here's our X1, Y1 line and that's printed on the map. And then what we do is we take the height of R and we mark that up here. We take the height of Q and we mark that there. Now, because we are looking at a plane and we are looking at a level line on the plane, we will see Q, R and P as an edge. So once you have R found and Q found, you extend that on. And then as you look here, when we bring P across, as that projection line comes up here to intersect the plane, that then establishes the height of P. So we have the height of P there just very, very simply by finding uh, R and Q and extending that on gives us the height of P because we see the plane as an edge. And you have to know that, that when you look along a level line on a plane, you will get an edge view of that plane. In relation to the dip angle, 
the dip angle is the angle that this plane makes to the horizontal plane so the x1 y1 is a horizontal line if we draw this line here parallel to that that gives us this angle here theta and we write in theta equals the dip angle so a very simple question all you had to do was extend on the strike line bring r down with that and p down with that because we're projecting from plan this is going to be an auxiliary elevation Heights do not change in elevation, so we take the height of R, we take the height of Q, and we apply them there to the new elevation. And then by finding R and Q and extending it on gives us the height of P that we're looking for. And um, drawing a horizontal line there in gives us the dip angle. So that's those two parts of the question answered. Another way that you can establish the height of P is this. It is important to remember that the strike is the direction of a level line. And we do have a point there on the line P to R that we know that point definite. We have a definite point on that line. So if I draw a level line there from Q across to intersect this line coming up from here at that point, where those two lines meet gives us a point on this line going from p to r so i can i can line up my set square there with r and that point and extend on that line and that's also another way of getting the height of p so by knowing that the strike line is a level line and that gives us this point here on p r so by drawing the level line across from q and extending that line up until the, until it hits the same level, that gives you the point on P or, and then draw from or through that point on, and it will find P as it hits the projection line. So there's two ways of dealing with that question. Both are correct and both will get full marks. Now, finally, the last part of the question um, asks us to, um, to establish the true angle between the line, the strike line there coming from R, um, the true angle that it makes to the line P or sorry, the strike line coming from Q, the true angle that that makes to P or. So in order to get the true angle between the line S and um, P or, so if we go back over here, here we have the plane P, Q, R, and we have the strike line coming across here to intersect the line P, R at this point. Now, because this is planing down away from us, we do not see the true angle between the strike line and the line P, R, so we want to get the true angle of that. Now, the only way to do that is to get a view of this plane where you're looking at it at an angle of 90 degrees. So if we go over here to where we have the edge view of the plane, we have the edge there, R, Q and P. And if we look in at this at an angle of 90 degrees, that will give us the true shape of the plane. So if I project R off there at 90 degrees and Q, and P off the plane at an angle of 90 degrees, we are now looking at it square on. Now, the next thing is, once you have projected off from this, this is an auxiliary elevation. So projecting off of this, this is going to be a plan. And we have to get our wits in plan. So again, what we do is we draw a line here going through P at 90 degrees to these projection lines. So what we've done is we've just taken the X1, Y1 line and moved it that it's going through P and that now becomes our reference line. So that means we end up with P there on our reference line. I take the distance there from the reference line back to R and that will give me R here. And we take the distance from the reference line to Q and from our reference line, we get Q here. And then connecting all of those together gives us the true shape of the plane P or Q. Now, in relation to getting the, 
the strike line running across that plane well you can see there that the strike is in line there so if you bring that point up to q and then as that comes across there it's going to be in line on this side as well so you just along the projection line from q down to there draw that line and then using a protractor measure the angle here between or the line or p and this line here and that's 81 degrees so by getting the true shape and finding the line running across the plane will give you the true angle there another way that you could have established that point is by taking the distance from the reference line back to the line p or at that point there because we know that's where the line s is cutting p or and then marking that distance back would still give you the same point it all is the same so again so to get the final part of the question which is to find the true angle between the strike line and the plane q p or q go to the edge view of the plane where you see the plane as an edge and looking at an angle of 90 degrees this will give you the true shape of the plane so we project off this at an angle of 90 degrees. We establish a reference line going through P at 90 degrees to the projection lines. That will give us P on our reference line here. Take the distance back to R and Q and mark those distances out along those lines there. And now that completes the plane. Finally, you find that point there where the line S intersects P R. Find that line where it intersects p r in this view and then once you've drawn that line we measure the angle between this line here and p r and that gives us the true angle um, that last bit is difficult enough and it requires a bit of imagination um, but that then completes the question so as you get through that question it does get a little bit more complicated it, it's important to remain focused and to keep thinking about what you're doing but that completes the 2019 Earthworks question, design and communication graphics higher level. Here we have the completed drawing. The next couple of slides show the marking scheme and the solution as outlined by the State Examinations Commission. You can pause the video and have a look at these and see how the marks are awarded for the question. This completes the explanation of the geologic geometry for the 2019 higher level question. Thank you for your attention.